All right, still working on the brakes. Um, wondered why I'd get great pedal, and overnight all the fluid would leak out. And I found that this brake cylinder, this is the driver's side, just has a small leak. And it was dripping out, <coughs> and I wasn't seeing it because it was, it was collecting in the drum. I had the drum on, and so I've got to replace that. Um, not unexpected, this was the side that was most exposed to uh, moisture. So I'll do that and I'll start it on the front. So if you're following these videos, you know that this truck is always impressing me. Well, look at that. This thing had a brake job shortly before it was parked. I mean, those pads are still got the, the paint on them and all. They are so thick that the piston is completely seated, which is awesome because it probably didn't rust. So I haven't actually checked the front brakes at all, but this piston gives me a good, good hope. Not sure about this hose. Been around the block a few times, so I'll probably change that. You know, it doesn't look that old, um, but it's, it's crusty. Don't think I'd trust it. So that's probably gonna go. Um, the hub does move just fine, but it's very rusty. Actually, I shouldn't say it moves just fine, it moves. Uh, but as you can tell, there's rust, there's rust on the uh, rotor that I need to address. The rotors are salvageable, assuming they're not warped. They're not new, certainly, but I'm super happy that this thing has disc brakes in front. Um, I thought it did looking underneath and sure enough it does so um, Next step is to see if the front brakes work clean up this this area because it's it's pretty crappy There's a lot going on in here as far as stuff living and clean up to do um, Then we'll get on to the brakes. I'll probably order that wheel cylinder and, and a couple of hoses for the front at the same time So I'm back at it on the truck. Um, I might have mentioned before that I found a leak in the rear brake cylinder. I was wondering why the fluid ran out over the course of a day or two of uh, the rear side, the front side serving the rear of the master cylinder. So I found a very, very small leak out of the uh, left rear wheel cylinder. So tonight I changed it, $13, $13 at O'Reilly is a pretty good deal. And brake cylinders can tell you a lot about the history of the truck. And uh, here's, here's some interesting stuff that, that I'm theorizing about the truck. When you look at the brake cylinder, I think you can see that right here. It's heavily corroded, heavily, on one side. So the, it sits like this, so essentially the bottom side. You flip it over, it's even worse. See this corrosion right here? I mean, it's bad. And again, the bottom side, because it sits like this in the truck. And I've always thought that this truck might have sat in a bit of water um, based on some of the corrosion I see. And I believe that's true. This is the, the wheel that had the flat tire. And I think it was just low enough for when we had periods of very, very heavy rain, which we do get in Tennessee, that that wheel just sat in water and that's what corroded this out the other side seems to be all right i haven't taken it out but it's not leaking but i suspect the other side will be com completely fine because the tire never went flat anyway it's in um, i've started to bleed it and i've already got some pedals so maybe this will put the brake issues to rest um, another interesting thing i found out that 72 ford f100s did not come with disc brakes um, didn't know that because this truck has disc brakes. Um, the reason that I found this out was I went to get some brake hoses for it for the front and there was no listing for disc brakes, uh, disc brake hoses for the front. And upon further checking, no listing for calipers either. So someone in the past has converted this to 73 to 79 disc brakes. Um, great for me. I'd rather have it. Um, looks like it was done right, um, but the hoses are 
they just don't look quite right for me, so those are going to go. But like I said before on the on the earlier, the pads are in great shape. Um, maybe this disc conversion was done shortly before the truck was parked. I don't know. Um, the shocks appear relatively recent as well. So I'm going to uh, continue working on the brakes, and I'll have more later. So we got the uh, driver's side front off. Pretty rough. Um, something, something might have been living here. It just might be a collection of stuff. But the rotor is in much better shape than the passenger side. It's not as worn. It's not as grooved. Um, it just, this rotor is salvageable. Again, the brake hose is pretty weak. Lots of cobwebs, but um, so far. Nothing horrible. So call me crazy, but I'm thinking that I might drive this truck this weekend. Um, but before I do, a lot of people are asking me, take the bed liner out. They want to see what shapes the bed is in. So I figured rather than do that, I'm just going to look underneath and see how it is. And what I found was real nice. And there's the bed floor. And there is not a single hole anywhere. Anywhere. Look at that. Nowhere. Not even on the edges. All the way down. Nothing. Nothing. So usually that's what happens when you use a bed liner. It protects it from water sitting there, which causes rust. But while I'm under here, there's a couple of other things I have to do. First of all, I'm working on the brakes to fix them in order to drive it this weekend, but I need to be able to use the e-brake just in case, in case of emergency. So I'm gonna to need to oil up the, the lines, um, the, the emergency brake cables. The, these are the cables right here. Right here and right there. And what happens is rust gets in there and uh, the inner cable, which is here, can't move through it. So it sticks, often sticks in the on position. Not good uh, when that happens because your rear wheels are frozen up. Now these are not stuck, um, shockingly, right? They actually have a bit of give. Um, not a lot, but they shouldn't have a lot to begin with, but they are moving. You can see that, um, and I can hear the brake moving a little bit behind me. So I'm going to oil them up with a combination of mystery oil and PB Blaster. Um, this PB Blaster stuff I had never used before. I've always been a WD-40 guy, but based on what I can see, this PB Blaster is far superior, and it's what I'm going to be buying from now on. It just seems to be a much better product, and much, much more oil to it, much more penetrating to it. Um, so I'm putting the mystery oil on it. Now what mystery oil does, it's not much of a lubricant really, but it, it, it seeps in. So it will penetrate into, you got to let it sit for a while, but it penetrates inside the cable and lubricates it that way. That's why I like to use this when I'm freeing up a seized engine or, a, or an engine that's almost seized because of that. So I'm just, you know, it's making a little bit of a mess, but I've got, I've got cardboard down here, which is absorbing what I, what I miss. Oops. And uh, it's super slippery. It's super slippery, uh, which is why I keep dropping it. But you get the idea. So you let this soak in. And I'm going to go out down here as well. And again, this is Marble Mystery Oil. If you watched the first part in this series, you saw that I used it to lubricate the cylinders before I started it. And I'm just gonna let that sit overnight like that. And it seeps in 
and then I'm going to hit it with PB Blaster, and I think I'm going to be just fine. I think this e-brake's going to work, which will give me an added level of security. Um, next thing I'm going to do, uh, let me get over to the other side, is fix the tailpipe. This tailpipe, the exhaust on this thing is pretty good, except there's a leak up front at the manifold, and this tailpipe is broken. Uh, really kind of an odd, odd that it's only broken in this one place. But as you can see right here is the muffler and where it comes out right there, it's broken and here's the, the pipe. I think I've got a connector that'll, that'll take care of that pretty easily. So I'm going to try to do that tonight as well and that'll probably do it for me for tonight. It's a work night. Uh, I can't be up all night working on this thing, even though I'd like to. Uh, it's probably not a good idea. So I'll, I'll check back later. So I've been letting the e-brake cable soak. And uh, look what we got now. Just heard the, the brakes in the back engage. Pops right out. Like new. Like new, this truck never disappoints. Okay, everyone, um, got the back brakes bled. Uh, one of the front brakes doesn't appear to work at all, so the caliper might be stuck, but I think it's time we got to see if this thing will move under its own power. So that's what I'm gonna try right now. I'm gonna start it up, put it in gear, just move it back and forth a couple of feet. Let's see what it does. So, for the first time in 15, 16 years, it moves under its own power. Um, I could feel the brakes working. I'm not sure what was, what was working and what wasn't, but it stops. Um, went into reverse, went into first. So, success. Um, next step, fix that front, left front caliper and take it for a ride. Uh, if you want further updates on this, I'm going to keep working on it. Just subscribe. Have a good night. Now that she moves, uh, I brought her out into the light. This is the first time out in the light since uh, it cleaned up a little bit. Remember before it was covered in green, but it's never been washed. Um, the cleanup before was all done by hand. So today it's gonna get washed. And uh, I've got it running right now. I mean, you can, you can hear how smooth this thing runs. It's crazy. The brakes are working just enough to move it around, but they're not where they need to be. I think it's running just off the rears. But we'll see how it does. Um, you know, you can see there's still green on it and such. We'll see how it does. I'm not going to power wash it. A lot of people have been asking me about power washing it. I don't think it needs it. The paint's very thin, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to try washing it by hand, scrubbing it a bit, and seeing how that goes. Looking pretty good though out in the light. It's real nice to see it. Okay, so we've been working hard on this um, cleaning. We cleaned the whole truck, uh, but then we went back over 
the cat the, uh, the the front clip and you can see the difference between the two um, this is finally mostly clean but not completely I, I just I can't get it completely clean because I won't have any paint left um, but it's certainly a lot better so the next step is buffing it um, I've got some Meguiar's ultimate compound which is really great stuff they don't pay me for this endorsement I just happen to like it because it's easily available um, at AutoZone and such and it works pretty good um, so I just did a little test patch here and uh, you know the difference is it's startling it's not perfect I didn't expect perfection but it looks pretty good it certainly looks better than the rest of the truck um, I stopped this section because the Sun started hitting it and this is getting too hot so I'm gonna move over here where it's cool you don't want to ever buff when it's hot okay so I'm hopeful this is where we ended up uh, really tired a lot of work but it looks pretty good um, if you've been following how it looks before um, here's a good example have not done below this fender yet compared to there haven't done the bed yet I and mean, look at that this thing was just covered haven't done this part of the cab so here's a good here's a good comparison compare that to that still got a long ways to go but it's way better happy with it about to put it away for the night had enough of this truck for a couple of days um, but it's it's a good truck and it's coming along nicely